everyone, welcome here. I hope that you are getting settled into your house churches. Maybe you're watching online. We're just really grateful to be able to gather together, have good conversations, encouraging one another. Um, before we jump into our conversation, I just want to mention a few things that we have coming up. The first one being on February 3rd, we're going to be having a pop-up prayer night at 7.30 in Winnipeg. You can find all of the details for that on our website, wearenewcity.com, or on our app as well. You can find our calendar and find all the details there. And then on February 5th, which is Sunday, we'll be having our Winkler Collective Gathering at the Bunker, 10 a.m. Invite some friends and family. We would love to see you there. And we are so appreciative of your continuous generosity as you give financially to New City. And if you would like to maybe do so for the first time or continue, you can give at our collective gathering. You can give on our website, wearenewcity.com slash give, as well you can give on our app. We're grateful for your generosity as we continue to serve one another. That's all I got for you. Let's dive into today's conversation. Well, Pastor T, welcome back to House Church. Church. <laughs> what were you doing there? I just mouthing it, it's lip syncing. Like you do it, you say it, and then I'll lip sync it. Ready? Okay, but why are you looking directly into the camera? Or you want me to just say anything? <laughs> pretty good <laughs> how was your break man it was wonderful it was a good break it was in the uh language of one of my friends okay it was legit legit it was a legit break legit break it was decent and how has your week been it's been fantastic what you get up to this week uh housework Housework. Yeah, I have been uh, trying to kick it up a notch in the husband department. Ooh. So I did laundry. Okay. I even baked cookies. Okay, it's slow been down. years. Slow down. Here. <laughs> Since I baked cookies. Uh, hold on one second. You're saying <laughs> like you baked cookies like from scratch? Yeah. Like you. Yeah, actually, not even with a recipe. Just let the creativity flow. You were baking cookies? Yeah, just, just creativity. This is wild. Yeah. Just, I don't think I've ever known you to bake cookies. No, I haven't baked cookies in probably since my teen years. As there's some protein powder, some bananas in there, just a little bit of everything. And they turned out. They're good? Yeah, they're all right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What else? I want to hear I did more. The dishes. <laughs> wow. Filled the your, dishwasher. Your Emptied standard the dishwasher. Is like... Yeah, it's very low. <laughs> <laughs> Folded all the laundry. Put it away. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Swept the floor. Okay. Yeah. You know, just doing those things. And how was your efforts? How were they received, received? by your wife she and your children? She was very appreciative. Okay. Yeah. Kids, not so much, but wife was appreciative. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. How about your week? It's been a heavy one, um, but not like overwhelmingly heavy, but it's been like emotionally, um, there's been a few roller coasters. Mm -hmm. Um but I'm, I'm not like drowning, but I feel like I've been carrying some weight. And I think that's mm -hmm. the best way to put it. So I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. I'm doing mm -hmm. what I want to be doing. Mm -hmm. I think I'm where I, I should be. Gotcha. I feel like I'm walking in the lane that I'm supposed to be in. Oh, good. I feel like I'm walking in purpose. Good. I feel like I'm living out my values. Mm -hmm. That's um, important. But that doesn't mean it doesn't feel heavy at times. Right. So right. it's been good, but heavy. A good heavy? But not crushing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This heaviness is a good good heaviness. Can you relate? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm not in that, that season. Yeah, but There's you've been, been there. seasons where I relate with that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope people have a chance to connect in House Church. Um, but we had House Church two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any video available online. Just hung out. We just hang out. We mm -hmm. had food. Um, I got to check out Shannon and David's place. Mm -hmm. I stopped in there. And then I was also able to check out the party going on at Henry and Megan's mm -hmm. place. I got two house churches. In one In day. one day. Wow. I'm telling you, man. People got to try this yeah. thing. You're like the spirit of Philip where you got transported from I one place to the other. I just get transported. I mean, these wow. guys live like 
two minutes from each other nice. so it's kind of nice but i recommend people to try it like yeah just try to dash to the other one just dash especially if you don't like the house church you're in no everyone loves every single house church oh, they're in that's true <laughs> it's like okay halfway through okay guys i'm leaving think i'm gonna try another one out <laughs> call the office is there one close by i can try out <laughs> something different <laughs> no it was dope it was really good i really enjoyed the time of just hanging out having food good conversation mm -hmm. uh, both places and both spaces nice it was really good to see familiar faces again catch yes. up yes it was ask how the holidays went so it was so. really good i think that's something we should do more regularly mm -hmm. is you know have a house church week where it's kind of like just, there's nothing made available just no. hang out eat eat communion yeah eat together commune it's, together yeah Okay, this week, let's jump into what we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, this is interesting because I think we want to tackle like three key things today. Mm -hmm. As we jump back into like our regular routine, um, we took some time before our break to really reflect on the year mm -hmm. and go, let's take a quick glance at what God's been doing in the hearts of the people at New City. Yeah, It's amazing to watch who we were before, you know, 2021, 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and who we've become transformational you know, year huge, huge. transformation yeah. in many ways it actually feels like a different church yes yeah. right i think if you would have walked into new city mm -hmm. a couple of years ago and then not come for like two years oh my. and then walk in now i feel like it's you'd have a sense of people. like what happened what here? Ha <laughs> good question what happened what are, what are we doing mm -hmm. um but we're extremely grateful yeah and i feel like as we jump into another year here I feel like it's important for us to maybe um, align ourselves and talk about the direction that we're going. Yeah. I feel like we're always talking about the direction that we're moving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I hope that doesn't get like too boring for mm -hmm. people. But it's something I feel we have to continue to talk about to make sure that we're on track. Right. Uh, because we want to live and walk with purpose. So we're always sure. talking about the direction that we're mm -hmm. going. And so last week we jumped into a sermon um, mm -hmm. that you preached mm -hmm. at CMU. Um, and you were kind of highlighting um, the core concepts, the mm -hmm. key concepts of the new series that we're jumping into. Mm -hmm. And this new series really is doing that for us. It's aligning us yes. in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. It says, hey, we're going this way. Mm -hmm. We're moving forward in this direction. Yeah. And this sermon was really good. Mm -hmm. And it is the prelude to mm -hmm. the series. Right. What I would love for us to do, just in case someone didn't make it out mm -hmm. to the Winnipeg service... And even just as a reminder and a refresher for those of us that were there, right, is to do a review mm -hmm. of that sermon, a recap of it, mm -hmm. and then maybe you and I can even discuss some of the key points in sure. it and talk about some questions that relate to yeah. this prelude. Sure. So maybe real quick, like in a few minutes, yeah, give us like a summary of the sermon. The whole idea is this. If you have like a subject that you're painting and the subject looks great and it's all about that, it's the main thing, it's the commandments of Jesus, and then you're like, well, this would be a great complimentary piece. Mm. It's not a bad piece. It's not evil on its own. So you put the hat on the subject yeah. or you paint a little bit in here and you paint a little bit there. Yeah. Like, you know what would look good is a pair of boots. And then you put that on there. And eventually you can no longer see the main thing wow. because it's crowded with so many extras. Wow. And Jesus' church who he, he said he would build, if we would go make disciples, he'll build his church. Right. That was his promise. You right. make disciples, I'll build the church. Right. The church of Jesus has been around on the earth for almost 2,000 years. Yeah. And so that's a long time to follow him mm. for the instructions. And along the way, we grab all sorts of things that mm. maybe we feel are 
advantageous to the to the gospel right and not often do we do we take time to like assess those things that we're carrying in our wagon yeah to say is this is this something we should be carrying yeah for 400 years for 500 years for a yeah. thousand years we picked them up and so this season we'll do a little bit of that a lot of that. a lot of that <laughs> yeah the challenge <laughs> we're gonna like, do a lot of is that. this is this a complimentary yeah. to the subject or are we crowding it so much we can no longer see it yeah and we've kind of already been on that journey as a, for as sure. a community. For sure. But I think uh, as we, you know, assess them and put them back into the right place, again, they might, you might need to keep them, you might need to let them go. Yeah. But I think there's most certainly some things that we have been doing mm -hmm. that we could probably not be doing. Yeah. Because it actually takes away. Yeah. Rather than ads. Yeah. And I think there are some things that we haven't been doing that we, need to that we could pick doing. up and start doing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, um, there's a peace and just following <clears throat> Jesus is simple. And Paul gets concerned in the Corinthian church and he says that I'm afraid for you. Mm. And I think that's a, a solid fear coming from this aged apostle to that church at that time. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm afraid for you that it will be beguiled like Eve was. You'll be tricked right. in thinking that this thing is so complicated with all this stuff. And a lot of it had to do with like, traditions and customs and we do music this way and this is familiar to me and mm -hmm. and you start valuing and making things holy because they come from god but you started making them god mm -hmm. and he said it's actually it's simple yeah and i'm afraid that you're going to get your mind all tricked and take away from the simplicity of christ yeah the simplicity of the gospel yeah and so yeah we're just feeling everything yeah and just saying okay um let's make this simple yes yeah and let's live it out. I think it can feel very um, unstable yeah. in a person's walk and faith yes. when you start to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot that gets shaken. Yep. And what we don't want to do is shake things to a point where we're just rattled and confused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we do want to do is shake things enough that everything that's not important yes. falls off and the core remains. Uh, we may even discover the foundational things that can't be shaken yes the only Ooh. way those are discovered is if you shake it yeah if you shake it but they cannot be yeah shaken. you're like oh this was actually rock yeah i didn't know that had i not gone through the shaking yeah in a moment let's send people into the house churches and here's a question i'd love to pose um are there certain things that you identify within either church community. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have to be limited to new city. Mm -hmm. Let's let's increase the scope. Um, in the last ten years, mm -hmm. are there things that you identify within church culture and church community that you think we might have um, prioritized too highly, mm -hmm. and that can maybe fall further down the list? Um, I know for myself, for mm -hmm. example, growing up in the church, like. I mean, my dad was a preacher. Mm -hmm. I love a good sermon. Mm -hmm. I really love, love a, a good, good sermon. sermon. I remember in 2018, I went through a period in my life where I was like, I don't think I'll ever be whole again. And yeah. all I did for a number of months was go to Tim Hortons, mm -hmm. get my Earl Grey tea, sometimes green tea, sometimes peppermint tea, mm -hmm. depending on the day. On the mood. Depending on the mood I'm in. <laughs> get my tea, sit down, open up the laptop, and I would, no joke, from like... 9 a.m. to like, I don't know what time. Sometimes it was even just like the entire evening. I'd sit there and watch multiple wow. sermons. I was like, this was my way of trying to get yes. into the word is watch the sermon, read scripture. Mm -hmm. But I love sermons. sermons. So the shift that we went through mm -hmm. in New City as a church, mm -hmm. where we're like, like when you preached last mm -hmm. Sunday, mm -hmm. when was the last time you preached before that? Probably 12 months. I don't know. <laughs> It's been a long time. <laughs> well, at New City. Probably. At New City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've yeah, yeah. Some, some offshoots, but yeah, it's probably it's months, 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 months. Like yeah. months upon yeah, months. Yeah. yeah. And so this shift that we did is huge mm -hmm. because I think before we would have prioritized the sermon as like, you can't yeah. have church without a sermon. Right. Present. Everything was built around the, the sermon. Right. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Right. And so this shift for me actually was necessary, even mm -hmm. in my own heart, to recognize, wait a second. Maybe the value of having someone just preach from the front and everybody else just sit and listen. Yeah. There's value to it. Yes. It's not like it's not valuable. But is it in the right? But is it in the right spot? Mm -hmm. And what we did with New Cities, we went actually learning from each other. Mm -hmm. 
needs to come yes. further up the list. Yes. yes. You know what I mean? That's the big shift that we did. Yeah. That was good. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It was hard for me. Mm -hmm. I, amen and amen and amen. <laughs> Let's say my flesh okay. enjoyed it the least. But I, it's evident that it spiritually grew. Yeah. Like, there's been so much life that I didn't even know. Parts of me that spiritually are growing. Yeah. That I felt like maybe have never, ever grown. Wow. Like, in my whole walk with okay. Jesus. That maybe this muscle's been there. Okay. It's like that, it's, you know, I started working out my adductor muscle. Your, your what muscle? Adductor. Uh, it's like inner thigh. Yeah, okay. I didn't even know that muscle was there. I there was no a machine. I kept walking past that machine at the gym. I'm like, I don't even know how that works. <laughs> and then you use it and you're like, yeah. I've had this muscle in my body for 38 uh, years. And wow. I've never even worked it out or made it sore. That's yeah, what it feels like. That's what it feels like. To, to learn from the entire body. Yeah. To, it's been like, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Okay, so let's get people talking about that. Mm -hmm. Like if we reflect individually and go, what's something that I think I've identified in the past or identify now mm -hmm. as something that's maybe even healthy, mm -hmm. but in the wrong spot of priorities? Right. What's something that I see in church where I'm like, actually, maybe Jesus mm -hmm. is calling us to focus more on this. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear what people come up with. Yeah. I'd love to you know, see where those conversations go. And identify those things because i think we have to do this individually mm -hmm. right we are moving forward we were talking about this a little bit before we started filming we are moving as a community mm -hmm. but it's individuals moving yes right god's doing something in our yeah. hearts as a community but Starts he's doing something individually. individually in our hearts that's so what creates community yeah. what's the shift that's been happening what do we identify in our own hearts yes where you're like, I really value this, and maybe I value it too much over mm -hmm. where God is calling me to value yep. more. It's a good question. Okay, let's do it.
Okay, for a moment here, mm -hmm. um, as we keep going, I want to jump into Hebrews 13, um, written by Paul. Believed to be written by Paul. Believed to be written by Paul. Thank you. Because someone out there is going to be like, I don't think he did. <laughs> a biblical scholar is yeah. going to send us an email afterwards. That's right. <laughs> and in the last chapter of Hebrews 13, the author is giving some concluding words. In the first verse, it says, Keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. Mm -hmm. That's one thing he says. Mm -hmm. Next thing he says is, Remember those in prison as if you were there yourself. Mm -hmm. Remember also those being mistreated as if you felt their pain in your own bodies. He says, If you're going to remember just a few things, let's keep it real practical. Yeah. Love each other. Mm-hmm. Take care of those in prison as if you were there yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, care for those that are in need. Yeah. Yeah. Right? This is like the core stuff. Yeah. Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. Mm -hmm. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Mm -hmm. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Verse 7, remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow their example of faith. Mm -hmm. And then verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, yes. and forever. Yes. I love this. Mm -hmm. I love that he's including this in some of the core things that he's like, before I conclude this mm -hmm. book, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever solid so do not be attracted by strange new ideas mm -hmm. your strength comes from god's grace not from rules about food which don't help those who follow them mm -hmm. and then there's more in this chapter mm -hmm. but it's pretty much going this is the most important stuff i want you to remember right. mm -hmm. and for a second we could touch on each one of those maybe at a different point i want to highlight that one in verse eight jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever mm -hmm. so don't be fooled don't be attracted by strange new ideas mm -hmm. and i think the danger of stepping into something new mm -hmm. i think the danger of stepping into a series where we go what are the further instructions yeah. i think the danger in saying what do we need to drop and mm -hmm. pick up the danger is if you don't have jesus at the center of all of that yeah you can end up with strange new ideas yes <laughs> yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, like the platform to, for that to happen. Yeah. Exactly. You can end up with ideas that are really man-made, mm -hmm. that sometimes even seem really great, mm -hmm. but are actually not rooted in Jesus as yeah. the person of Jesus yes. and the teachings of Jesus. Yes. And so I think it's going to be really important for us as a church community as we move mm -hmm. forward into this series to keep looking at Jesus. Jesus. To come back to the simplicity of like, am I... In love with Jesus. That's a great question. Is Jesus Lord over my life? Mm -hmm. Am I following, like you said, the yeah. example of Jesus? Mm -hmm. If we can stay focused on that while having these other conversations, then I think we'll mm -hmm. be okay. But the moment Jesus is not the center of what we're doing, yeah, then we're going to be attracted by strange new ideas yeah. about rules of this, yeah. this, 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 that. And so that's not true. what we're trying to do. So good. And I will add this to that. Okay. Not add anything that's not scriptural. Yeah. But just um, was so valuable what you said about keeping Jesus first. Mm -hmm. Because by this, all men will know you're my disciples. You love one another. All these things he's saying is like Jesus is the same yesterday, day, forever. If you misplace what Jesus said would be the product or the outflow of having him as your, as your Lord and Savior and your teacher, it's like, okay, if you are my disciple, mm -hmm. you'll love one another. Mm -hmm. And if the attention and focus goes from off of, mm -hmm. I'm in love with Jesus, I'm a disciple, he has going out to like, well, I better meet this need and help this person do that. I mean, a disciple would do this. You will exhaust yourself. 100%. You will run out of steam. Yeah. You'll be inauthentic. Yeah. You won't have any fruit. Yeah. You'll become bitter. Yeah. You won't want to be a part of it. Yeah. It's like Jesus is just like, yeah. if you just, and if your life looks like Jesus and then, world jesus and then the world that's where i'm at yeah like i need a constant like i'm a pull right like because i'm stuck in this carnal yeah nature and i'm like yeah it's jesus all about jesus and if i just fall in love with him then 
I'll know how to love people. Yeah. And I, and it just flows and then I get distracted. And yeah. So keep your eyes on the prize. That's why he's the same yesterday for today. For, that's the one solid. Will never change. No. Once you shake everything, that's an unshakable Jesus will be thing. left. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in a place in my life right now mm -hmm. where when I put on a worship song, mm -hmm. a lot of our worship songs have language mm -hmm. and lingo about fighting battles. Mm -hmm. That's a big, especially big thing right now. It's a yeah. big <laughs> thing. And it has been for the last at least 10 years, yep. maybe even a little before that, but for sure in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. a lot of it is battles because we know there is a fight between yeah. good and evil. We know yes. there's a fight, you know, against, you know, sin. Yeah. Um, there's an internal battle of what we desire and what we know what is, is good for sure. us. So there is a sense of a battle. Yeah. But I think it's possible. This is this my, just my own thoughts. Push on it a bit. We'll, okay. We're listening. <laughs> I think sometimes we take certain aspects off scripture and then just focus just on that and make that the main thing. Mm -hmm. And I wonder whether in our music and lyrics that we use in our times of worship whether we've lashed onto a concept that is maybe just a small part of the christian walk right right so i think the idea of god fighting battles on my behalf mm -hmm. i don't know if that's the main purpose of my relationship with god yeah, absolutely i think it's a part of it absolutely right 100. but i think what we've done is we've looked at the old testament and looked at the stories of the israelites <laughs> and how they physically had mm -hmm. to go conquer places and god had yeah. to go help them fight yeah and we've taken these concepts and gone okay this is this is the christian walk yep. and then our songs reflect that is mm -hmm. everyone else is against me yeah just me <laughs> actually you know if we're gonna kick back and push a little bit of this what the series is about yeah if you took the modern day worship songs uh, like i'm not saying even a majority but just take take 12 of them and just read over their lyrics yeah and so much of when we enter into a time of worship yeah so much of the lyric is self-centric yeah it becomes about it me. builds the entire <clears throat> entire narrative around this individual that's singing it yes rather than the one we're supposed to be singing about or to exactly and so and i think i'm in a place right now where i'm like it's not that I don't like those songs. They're good. They're good. They're good. I find myself drawn more mm -hmm. towards songs that are like, this is the gospel, that Jesus came, mm -hmm. died for me on the cross, and now I have freedom, mm -hmm. that I have victory because of Jesus, Yes. that it was my shame mm -hmm. that he carried, mm -hmm. that it was grace I received when Jesus came and died for my sins. Like songs that are just highlighting like the foundation of the gospel, those are the ones that are really resonating for me right now where I'm mm -hmm. like, I feel like my, my heart can engage with it. Mm -hmm. And the songs that were really more about like, he's fighting on my behalf, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. aren't really hitting the same right now. Yeah. It might change. Yeah. It could be just where I am right now in this yeah. season of life. Mm -hmm. But I'm just making note of that yeah. for myself. It's kind of like, well, this is true. Jesus died mm -hmm. for my sins. Yeah. Like, this is true. So yes. that I'm like ready to proclaim loudly yeah. and like I can engage with that. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of other things where I'm like, I'm not sure. Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's fighting for me the way mm -hmm. I think he is. I don't know if right. that's actually his main focus mm -hmm. right now. I don't mm -hmm. know. I need to explore that. Mm -hmm. But this I do know. Yeah. Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. The Bible does tell me so. Yeah. Right. Like going back mm -hmm. to some of those childhood songs and yeah. truths that when you're teaching a child, yeah. it's like the fundamental stuff. Yeah. I'm like, those songs are really hitting right that's now. That's good. Just focusing just on Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's it's good. You have to start in the right order. Yeah. I think what you said is so good. So important. Okay, so maybe let's have a conversation right now in our house churches. Has there been seasons in your life where you feel like you were more in tune or in step yeah. with following the ways of Jesus? Where are you at now? Um, do you feel like Jesus is the center of your life? Let's chat about that because I think that's really important as we jump into this new series. That, that remains the core incentive of who we are the people that love jesus it's good and are disciples of jesus so is he still the center of my life if it's yes what does that look like if it's no how do i yeah how do you shift re realign? realign how do we go about doing that let's talk about that in our house churches
I think when we look at the teachings of Jesus, we did a whole series on profiling Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think the author of Hebrews here does a really good job of communicating the heart of Jesus and some of the things he taught about over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it's about caring about the needs of others. Yeah. In verse one, he says, love each other, care mm -hmm. for those in prison. And then again, there further down in verse 15 is like, and don't forget to do good and share with those in need. Yeah. Caring for the needs of others within your community mm -hmm. and outside of your community. Mm -hmm. That is the way of Jesus. A few weeks ago, no, like a month and a half ago, mm -hmm. Jason Peters yeah. um, came in and have a conversation with us. So good. Really good conversation. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal guy, phenomenal leader, phenomenal friend. Mm -hmm. And he highlighted how the organization he's working with, Safe Families, um, helps meet people's needs. Mm -hmm. And that launched us into a conversation in our house churches what how we can identify needs that are underneath the surface, how mm -hmm. we can look at people in our lives, in our house churches, mm -hmm. in our community, yeah, in our families, mm -hmm. and go, wait a second, maybe they have a need that I've been overlooking right. or not being aware of. Mm -hmm. um, to recognize that to be in crisis is something that anybody, irregardless of social status or Everybody's resources, is going to have trouble. Anybody can yeah. be in crisis, and it usually comes down to relational mm -hmm. connections. That if yes. I'm in crisis, what I really, really, really need is mm -hmm. some relationships that I can actually be in relational poverty but mm -hmm. have everything else. Yeah. And so we had some really good discussion at house churches. You mm -hmm. were hosting that week. Yeah. It went well in your house? Yes. We had some great conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got some really good feedback from yourself and from mm -hmm. some of the other leaders that were leading. Mm -hmm. And I wanted us to really quick just touch on that. Yes. Because um, I think it's important that we recognize that this isn't just like a have a conversation and then keep going. Right. No, this is something we actually actively want to work yep. on. How do we meet each other's yes. needs? Um, there's a lot of needs. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, even in the house church I was in, we identified quite a few even within just New City. Yeah. Sometimes it can feel extremely overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I do think that that is the name of the game of life mm -hmm. is that there will always seem to be more need than what you have. I do believe that there has to be a piece of of knowing, OK, I may not be able to fill every need. Mm -hmm. But this relationship with Jesus and the awareness of it, if I didn't know about it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even be able to fill them. Mm -hmm. So if you have, as you raise your awareness and you have 50 of them coming mm -hmm. at you, it gives you an opportunity to pray about, is there one I could fill? Mm -hmm. Is there one I can do? And then there has to be a level of peace mm -hmm. that you cannot possibly mm -hmm. um, fill all those needs. Yeah. And uh, But the one that you can fill to be at peace with that, at peace enough with your, because there is there is this possible ditch you could fall into mm -hmm. that could steal the whole joy mm -hmm. and the whole purpose of, of fulfilling needs and being like Jesus, and that is that, okay, I'm doing two or three, but how about the forty? I'm only looking at the forty-eight that I can't do, or the yeah. fifty. That, that's yeah. it's never going to be um, helpful. Yeah, in the long game of like following Jesus to, I mean, even Jesus did that, right? He walks through a whole crowd of people yeah. and he sees the one guy by the pool yeah. and he's like, I'm going to fill this need. Yeah. And I think that as we swim through the hundreds of needs in our community, yeah. that uh, we don't turn off our empathy because we're yeah. like, there's too many. So I'm going to just check out. No, you can call one, yeah. like one, fill that one need, fill those two needs. What do you have room for? Yeah. And just do those yeah. and know that we possibly can't fill them all. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Mm -hmm. um, I'm inspired. Mm -hmm. I'm very inspired by many people within our community, uh, the New City community, that are doing this really well. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, I could start throwing names out there, but mm -hmm. um, there's a lot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to mention, and the ways that people are actually being there for each other. Right. You know, inviting each other out for dinner. Yeah. Identify a need and going, wait, I can help out. I can give of yes. my time. I can give of my resources to help you out here. Yeah. That is happening. Yeah. And it's extremely, extremely beautiful to watch mm -hmm. as we continue to um, increasing um, yeah. our capacity to meet people's needs. Mm -hmm. There's some ideas that were brought forward that I thought yeah. were really good. Yeah. I think we need to sit with this and talk mm -hmm. through this and see how this works out. Right. I know Jason mentioned that in safe families, they have like a position where a right. specific person is a coordinator. Right. And they help coordinate the needs. So they see, oh, there's a need here, there's a need mm -hmm. here, and there is a family friend here or someone that's able to just meet the specific need. And they yeah. kind of coordinate that. Right. And some of the things we've been chatting about, you mm -hmm. know, after that house church conversation is, mm -hmm. is there, is that something maybe New right. City needs? Do we need like mm -hmm. one or two people that kind of do that, mm -hmm. right? Help coordinate these needs. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think we can continue to explore whether that's the direction we're moving. Right. I really see the value in that. Mm -hmm. I think some things we need to keep in mind mm -hmm. is anytime we are uh, putting someone in a specific position or role, mm -hmm. for me personally, mm -hmm. I'd rather see someone with those gifts and talents and already operating to some capacity mm -hmm. in that gifting. Right. And then going, hey, you're actually already walking yeah. this out yeah. and living this out. Yeah. And we think that maybe putting you into this role will mm -hmm. just enable you and help you to do it even better. Mm -hmm. As opposed to creating a position, mm -hmm. now expecting something to just happen. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to actually identify who's already doing that in the new city community. Right. Already kind of connecting people mm -hmm. and already coordinating. Someone that just picks up the phone and goes, hey, hey I heard about this, this need. Person. Do you know of anyone that can meet it? Right. Who's already gifted in that area? Absolutely. And then maybe we could explore whether there's a role that's created and a structure that's put together. Mm -hmm. But I personally think that what we want to do here is create something that's very organic and grassroots. Correct. As opposed to something that's institutional. Mm -hmm. So rather than going, okay, well, now a new city is going to figure out as an institution how we're going to meet all the needs. Right. That's not what we're doing. Right. We're going, how are we going to create relationships? Yes. Yes, yes. So that needs can be met. Yes. There is a value in that corporate approach, mm -hmm. but there is a deeper value mm -hmm. in a relational approach. And so mm -hmm. some of the, not all the needs, but some of the needs that may fall through the crack. And if we just took an assessment in our own life, maybe mm -hmm. some of the needs that you feel could be met by the community of believers mm -hmm. in your own life yeah. that aren't met, I would challenge yeah. each believer to ask themselves a series of questions. And the first one would be, um, there is this exercise of humility of having to reach out. Mm -hmm. uh, you see this in a marriage where if you have needs that aren't being met in a relationship um, and you just transmit them across the room like you expect your spouse to know that you're feeling this way, they don't. Mm -hmm. You have to communicate them mm -hmm. and there is a sense of humility to say i need help mm -hmm. uh, i'm reaching out to you mm -hmm. i'm picking up the phone mm -hmm. so i would hate to set up yeah. a corporate system that would take that footwork out of it exactly where i go i'm actually i'm actually needing help yeah and then secondly uh everything is built out of relationship yeah it and all comes down it to all that. comes down to every relationship. time everything yeah and so if if there is no relational investment on my part within the body, like I have a responsibility mm -hmm. to invest, um, the scripture tells us that two are better than one. Proverbs mm -hmm. says, four if one falls, he mm -hmm. lifts up his fellow. Mm -hmm. it, it it's it's pretty much saying that you really don't know mm -hmm. that two are better than one until mm -hmm. you fall. Yeah, and you're like wait. Yeah. So when you're in crisis, that's the value of relationships you've been building when you're not in crisis. Yeah, you're like whoa, I actually need people, and I realize. I haven't reached out to anyone. Yeah. I haven't invested in anyone. Yeah. And so I know that may be a little bit challenging if you're currently going through a crisis or need that's sometimes the last thing you want to hear. Yeah. But for future reference, yeah, yeah. Um, whatever it is you feel that you're needing, it is good to take inventory and say, have I given that? Yeah. Have I invested that? And then if you have, yeah. call those people up yeah. to say it's time to cash out, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I need that now. Yeah. And uh, so I would hate to take those Re those relational dynamics out of it exactly by creating an institution institutional program that's supposed to be doing what relationships supposed yeah. to be yeah there's things we could do collectively when we're together to mm -hmm. encourage relationship yep and that's what we'll focus on so yep. as we focus on meeting people's needs mm -hmm. we're trying to meet people's needs yeah we're going to do that through relationship and our yes. resources will be poured into that yeah if out of that we see opportunities to put something in place that would benefit the entire community, right. such as a role, administration, or administration, some sort of, then yeah. we'll allow that to come out of what's happening already through relationship. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to make sure we talk about that and respond mm -hmm. to that. Yes. Um, so that we have a sense of how we're moving forward now after mm -hmm. we've had that conversation. Yeah. And we will continue to have this conversation over and mm -hmm. over again. Yeah. Because that is the way of Jesus. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, and thank you to everyone for all the ideas that were sent in, like yes. some notes were sent in, super valuable. Yeah. I want people it to know so like good. we're looking at those, we're reading those, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to bring them to the table and have more conversations about what that looks like moving yeah. forward. But that is extremely valuable mm -hmm. and extremely helpful. Yes. 
So let's have a conversation in our house churches about the needs that we identify mm -hmm. and how we can meet those. Mm. But then let's also talk about the needs that we have personally yeah. and how we can take the first step like you were yeah. describing. Yeah. Um, and then take some time and pray in your house church. Mm. Um, pray for each other. No. Uh, take the time to hear whether there's any other prayer requests that you want to bring to the table mm -hmm. and then hang out and chat and do community. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for this new series. Mm -hmm. um, God's going to do some phenomenal things. And mm -hmm. I'm personally actually just really excited to discover what those things are. Yeah. You know, I think this is going to be very, like you said, transformative for all of us. Any last words from you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Nada. It's good. So good. Okay. Love Jesus, love people. Awesome. Mm -hmm.